What's up, everybody? We are back with another special edition of Third and Longhorn as we get ready for the uh, college football playoff. We're going to start doing some interviews with a few of the guys. And so today we have a very special guest, Mr. DeAndre Moore Jr. DeAndre, welcome. Thank you. Appreciate you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, thanks for coming in, man. So, uh, you know, this obviously is your first year at Texas. Uh, you came from out, outside Anaheim, correct? Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, what's, it, what's it been like adjusting to Austin? What are your thoughts on Austin so far? Um, I really, I loved Austin. That's why I was attracted to it because it reminds me of a little bit of home. So, you know, I got that city feel. Not to mention the whole countryside of it, which I'm not used to. So it's been uh, it's been really great. Man. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think something cool is that you, you not you not only came to Austin, like your whole family came with yeah. you. Is that correct? So yeah. you all, all moved down here. My mom, my dad, and my twin sister all came, plus my three dogs. So <laughs> okay, You're nice man. Yeah. Uh, well, what's been the biggest change for you? So I mean, obviously, last year being a, a you know a big time star in high school, big time recruit, coming into Texas and and hitting what is you know. Uh, a, a, almost a log jam at receiver because there's there's so much talent there this year. Right. But I think you know what's what's been the 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 biggest change for you this year. So you got to think um, coming into college, I played on a national championship football team at St. John Bosco. So we had just won a natty, um, you know, and I'm really on a high horse. And I come here and okay, there's Xavier Worthy in this room. <laughs> there's uh -huh. Ad Mitchell in this room. There's Jordan Winnington. There's Casey Kane, Jonte Cook, mm -hmm. Isaiah Nair. So I really had to lock in and you know, things weren't gonna be handed to me here. So I really had to, you know, come in early. I had to do all the little things right. So that was really my biggest adjustment was just figuring out my own way through all of the mess it seemed like. And you know, eventually I did. But yeah, that was, that's what I can say is probably the biggest um, adjustment for me. Kind of um, piggybacking off that question with the loaded receiver room like y'all have, which I consider probably one of the top three best, if not Definitely. the best receiving room the in best, the country. Yeah, the best. Um, coming into a room like that, seeing how you've played as a freshman, what is your advice to other players coming into a loaded situation like that? Like, how do you see the field immediately? Stay patient and learn. Mm. Mm. Okay. That, that was my biggest thing. I was, you know, blessed with the opportunity to have Jordan Winnington directly above me. So mm -hmm. I'm playing the slot. So Jordan Winnington is, you know, starting right now. And I really got to pick his brain and see how he moves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Witt is the first one in – Mm -hmm. You know, the room, the first one in the facility every single day, like he doesn't skip a day. He's always taking care of his body and just really showing the younger cats how to, you know, really move and, you know, to have a long career. I mean, he's been here for what, five years now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, really just for me, I got to really learn under him and see how, you know, college football really works. You know, not to mention Xavier Worthy and A.D. Mitchell, guys who have made plays, you know, in college football, A.D. coming off of two national championships. Mm -hmm. So I really get to, you know, pick their brain. And that was honestly my biggest thing. Like I said, I came from Bosco and I'm thinking, you know, I'm popping, I got everything going. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was, I was really uh, hit with the rude awakening when I got here, you know what I mean? Like, okay, you're good, but these dudes are good as well. So, you know, you got to lock in. So that's the approach I took for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. DeAndre, you got you got you got a you got an old soul about you. I kind of I kind of I kind of picked that up, especially you being a, a true freshman man. Uh, I think uh, I think that's something to, to be praised. I think um, um, the maturity level that you have just by sitting here. I see you out on the field doing your thing, but uh, where do you get that that confidence and that maturity level right. that you have? And maybe it's your personality or whatever. But don't get me wrong, it for you come all the way to Texas and come to University of Texas to have that that maturity that you have, um, I, I think it, it it's going to fare, fare well for you. Right. You're going to do well here. I'll put it like that. Right. Where, where, where do you get that from? My father, DeAndre Moore Sr. So I was homeschooled from sixth grade all the way to eighth grade. Hmm. And um, I spent a whole bunch of time wow. with my dad working out, and I really just got to pick his brain as well. So, you know, a lot of his mannerisms, you know, bleeded onto me. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Which I'm grateful for. So, yeah. Yeah, would you? I got another question. It's probably it, it's jumping around a little bit, but um, you being number eleven, right? So um, there's uh, this. I'm gonna put you on the spot. That I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Y'all, y'all don't say nothing. I know y'all where y'all going with it. Um, yeah, but Young Jay, number eleven is 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 iconic number right. at the University of Texas. There's, <laughs> I, you know, I know you're not from Texas, but uh, there's some people that's 
that's worn that number with right. number <laughs> in. And I mean, uh, uh, just big time legacy. Right. Do you know either, I know three, I know one really well, I know three of them. <laughs> I know three of them. Don't that mess are, that this are, up, <laughs> Don't mess no, it up. It, he might. It might. Because he's young. He's young. I get it. You would. I, I, I would. I would. I know. He was really hitting it around it. It made it real subtle. He was subtle. thinking hard. I saw the gears turning. <laughs> yeah. I know you were, and I know a quarterback were for sure. The quarterback were. Yeah, that was uh, Major, uh, Applewhite. Major Applewhite. Yeah. And yep. uh, uh, Ricky Williams yeah. wore it. First couple years, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah, his freshman sophomore. Yeah. There's a couple more. I, didn't know that. Yeah. I Sam, definitely the see Sam the Ellinger. Yeah, yeah. Too. yeah. 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 wait, who yeah. said what number was Ellinger? Right? Ellinger wore. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was talking yeah. about. The quarterback wore. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, Applewhite was a little before your time. So my age, I got to brush up on my UT history. It's like 1973. No, that's crazy. DJ gonna give you your history lesson. Yeah, no, I learned that real quick. I'm here for it. Wherever I go, I always look at number eleven. Especially on the University of Texas, and I see you, dog. You, I'm telling you, the routes you running out there, like you, I'm. I ask people all the time, man. He catches everything. Like this guy, you know, sophomore, junior. Like, no, nah, that's a true freshman, right mm. there. So that's 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 big praise. Appreciate man. it. Thank yeah, you. Definitely. Um, before we kind of transition more into football, real quick, you saying you're from Anaheim, California? I'm from. Right? So I lived everywhere in Southern California. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, up until about sixth grade, uh -huh. we moved to Las Vegas, Nevada, and I was up in there for about six years, and then I moved back home for my last two years of high school. Okay. Yeah. I guess my question would be, what made you come all the way out here to Texas? Like, what was the pitch that Sark gave you that was like, hey, I'm leaving the state to come to Texas? Funny question. Um, I've been knowing Sark and his and Sark and Banks since the eighth grade. They offered me to Alabama in the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So yeah, so I've been knowing them for years now. Uh -huh. So it was really just all came full circle for me, uh -huh. honestly. Yeah. But um, my biggest thing to, for choosing Texas was coming to a big brand where I can showcase myself. I feel like I have a really big personality, and it really shows on the field. And Texas was really the perfect spot for me. Uh -huh. Plus, at that time, I didn't really feel like um, Pac-12 football was big time football. Uh -huh. So I had to come to a <laughs> no, big that's brand. Real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's real. Damn, eighth grade? Yeah, yeah. Eighth grade. Hey, well, he got to put that out there. That's, is that, that's, hey, is that's that even legal? Time, <laughs> yeah. yeah, nah, it was, it was crazy. I had picked yeah. up six offers in under 24 hours in eighth grade. Wow. That's crazy. And Alabama was the last one. What, what you was doing? Like, it was 707 or something? So I went to a, um, I went to high school, Desert Pines, Darnell Washington, the big tight end that went to Georgia, 6'8". Yep, yep. mm -hmm. I was there with him. So he, they had a showcase. Everybody in the country came and, you know, the eighth grader you know, went out uh, there and killed. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I racked up I six offers. Yeah, yeah. Take advantage of opportunity. For sure. That's That's awesome. I didn't get my first offer till I think, sophomore year in high school. I was a junior. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get mine until I was a junior. The game yeah. is changing. For sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, well, DeAndre, I know you got, you, you know, this this year you've done everything you can to get on the field. And I think you've you've really, we've seen you out there on special teams, obviously gotten some time in there. Like what's, uh, what's like, what are the areas that you felt like you've excelled this year that you've come the furthest way? Obviously, you know, not, not getting to play as much as you want, but I right. think getting ready for next season and preparing and things like that. Being a sponge being as versatile as I can be. Um, proving my worth on special teams is really, um, you know, a big part of me. Because I, I saw the writing on the wall early on, like, okay, we got these dudes, you know, they're getting ready to get out of here and they got to, you know, do what they got to do to go. So I have to, you know, make myself available. So whether that be, you know, kick return, filling in for Keelan Robinson, you know, TCU game, or, um, you know, starting that corner on punt return, whatever I could do to be on the field, I was going to do. And that's what I did. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, what, DeAndre, what, what, um, What's the one thing where you say from high school, play big time in high school and come into Texas? What's the one thing you say, man, this is the difference from high school to college? It's from what I see right now, this is this was the this was the a little bit of adjustment, but wow, this is this was a gap. One, I'll say the offense. Mm -hmm. The mental, the mental of everything was really big for me. Um, I went to St. John Bosco, which is a college prep. So I, I had a, you know, I had a little bit of a, you know, an early, yeah. an early get go. But um, coming here, learning all these plays, like I got to know what he has, he <laughs> has, he has. I got to know the protection for the lineman. The quarterback has to go through all these reads. I have to know what he does so I can run my route accordingly. So it was just, <laughs> it was a lot of stuff that goes into Sark's offense that you really have to, you know, sit down and really learn. Mm. And that was a really big thing for me. And um, another thing I can say is just the feel of the game. Mm -hmm. Really, that was a big thing. Just being comfortable in college football. That that was that was mm. that was it for me. Yeah. Kind of like the speed, right? 
His speed is. is I'm a fast guy. Nah, so like not speed. Yeah, like yeah. Speed yeah. Part of it. No. Like, not just the speed of the game. Flow, like the flow <laughs> yeah. speed of I'll the game. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. let me ask you this since we're on the topic. Was have you did you feel like you experienced so in the NFL, there's a thing called a rookie wall right. where rookies like it's a shock to them like later in the season, like they just feel like they burnt out. Yeah. Right. Did you ever experience that as a freshman this year? Like you hit a wall or you like the routine just felt like too much for you? Fall camp. Fall camp. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sir. My first fall. My first fall camp was. Can I cuss on here? No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. My first. My first fall camp was hell for me. Yeah. Um. Just the football every single mm-hmm. day. I was not used to that at all. Right. So, I have to be on top of my recovery. Like I'm. I'm a freshman. Okay. You know my legs is fresh. I can. I can go out there run and then go get into bed and then wake up the next morning and be fine. But it got to a certain point where I was like, okay. I'm coming upstairs to to my dorm room and man, my <laughs> knee hurt, like my back hurt, right, like what, right, what's going right. on, like what's up? So I had to figure out how to take care of my body really, really early in the fall camp, and you know that was uh, you know what got me through it. But I'll probably say if I hit a wall, that was when I did. Nice, and I appreciate you for sharing that. I, one thing I tell people is like the routine you have right now in terms of taking care of your body. Most people don't pick up that routine until later on. Later. These guys could tell you. Yeah. So the fact that you didn't picked it up this early in your career, keep that going and keep adding to it because right. it's just going to extend your lifespan. Right. I have really great teachers. So yeah. I'm just looking at them, seeing what works for them and mm-hmm. you know, adding it to me. So that's great. Nice. So uh, what, what other sports did you play? Uh, obviously track, right? right. So, I, so I ran track for one year. People, people think I've been a track guy forever. I ran track for one year and I'm a hooper. My dad was a. Uh, you, you're a hooper. I'm a hooper. My dad was a. They didn't really have rankings back then, but he was a five star basketball player okay. coming out of uh, L. A. So he went to um, Compton High. He went to um, Vanderbilt for two years, coming out. And then he transferred to San Diego State. So I have a hooper background. Me and my brother. So okay. I was hooping up until about like seventh grade. I think at my peak, I was like a top fifty basketball player in the country. Dang. Yeah. Wow. And then football just took over. Man, you chose the wrong sport. I did. I did. <laughs> I definitely did. Yeah, I know I did. Well, G, when you talk about talk about being a sponge, I think like it's 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 cool to hear about Jordan and and what like, him taking you under. Any other guys in that room that have been really helpful in helping you build your you know right. y- your routines, et cetera? Xavier and Ad Mitchell, they're more of a you know lead by example. I mean, pretty much all of them are, but just seeing what they do on the field and their preparation for practice alone was what I could really take from it. They walk to practice every day and they get their little warm ups in, making sure that their ankles are right, their knees are right and all that good stuff so that they can perform at their best in practice. Cause I mean, you perform at practice, you're gonna perform in the game. Yeah. So that's honestly the other guys that I can, that I can say, not to mention Malik Murphy, another LA kid. Um, Leak outside of Jordan is probably the most locked in kid I've seen. Mm. Like I said, Jordan is the first one in the building, we could, leak is probably the second by like wow. maybe 30 minutes. You know what I mean? So he's always in the recovery room, getting some recovery, staying late to get his abs in, you know, extra lift. So yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably say that those guys. What, uh, what's your favorite thing to do when you're not playing football? I love watching anime. Mm, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, my uncle is probably like 10 years older than me. So mm-hmm. it's the age gap, there's, it's there, but it's not too big. So I grew up with him watching uh, the Boondocks, yep. uh, Dragon Ball. So yep, like yep. I came up where it was like, okay, that's what my uncle's doing. I'm gonna just do it too. So ever since then, Dragon Ball, One Piece, all these different animes that I'm watching now. So, you know, it's great. I, mean, I like watching <laughs> anime. Um, Reading my Bible <laughs> and playing video games. Come on, there come on, that's about nice, it, man. Yeah. Love that, bro. For sure, that's awesome. What uh, what's your pregame routine as far as like as far as prep, like as far as food, music? What what do you what are you always doing? Okay, okay. So as far as food at the hotels, um, we wake up in the morning. I just go get some fruit. I don't want to eat too much. And then for pregame meal, like the pregame lunch, I'll probably have some pasta, like some. Uh, some spaghetti with some bread, Hawaiian bread, fire. Mm-hmm. By the way, you yeah, you know like, about you it. The show. Why, why the is, Hawaiian, real quick, why is spaghetti like? Indeed, why is that the pregame meal for every athlete? Like, <laughs> hey man, that's is, what they really? give us. <laughs> nah, they, nah, that's like an industry uh, thing. Yeah, I started. Yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah, 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 I was even doing that in high school too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My high school coach did the same thing. If we had Alfredo, I would get that. Yeah, but yeah. Alfredo slow you down a little bit. Just a little bit. That's why red I and cheese. white sauces. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so spaghetti, Hawaiian bread. Um, depending on if they have a good steak or not, I'll have that steak. And then um, 
whole bunch of fluids. So yeah. propels, I'm a big propel guy. So yeah. I'm, I'm knocking down those propels. And for as far as music pregame, I don't like to be up. Like I like to be mellow. So I can just think about everything that I'm going to do. So for a long time, I was listening to country music. Yeah, so Tennessee whiskey on repeat. You would have hated uh -huh. me, but <laughs> I was the one turned up. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't be turned. Yeah. I can't be turned. But I will say, I go through these moods where, like, on the bus, I can listen to the turn stuff. I put on my Young Boy, you know, my uh, my LA music or whatever to get me hype. But then as soon as like we doing that Bevo walk, country music or some low mellow music, probably some ride wave or something just to calm me down, and then I go do my warm up. Ride wave before the game? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ride wave oh, all the time. We need oh, tuck on just, we need oh, tuck on yeah. just for the reactions. I love hearing him react, man. Like he, he's, he's always gotta go, what? Ride uh, before the game is crazy. I'm kinda, I kinda I like the ride before the game Not too. What? Well here's my thing. If you listen to bangers, like you know the pregame process is like a four hour process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't listen to young boys. Oh no, I'm four saying hours. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I can't listen to young boys. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, be okay, I got you. I can't. I'm, yeah, yeah. In, I'm in my mood now. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get ready. I'll be trying know. to talk to the kids and the parents and stuff. Oh, so like, I, can't I ain't be. gonna lie. Game day, I don't talk to nobody. <laughs> nobody. Like, I don't them. answer my phone. Don't call me. Don't text me. Nah, not answering the phone. Crazy. Yeah, every day after the game. <laughs> my mama be calling me on secondary. <laughs> <laughs> secondary. Everything's secondary. <laughs> well, well, D, I think well, we'll get, we'll get back to the the subject of food. I think you've got a special story, and you have something that I think is. One of the best stories in all of college football, as far as NIL goes, as far as anything, that you started your own business right. with some of the money you made. And I think it's incredible. So we'd love to hear that story right. of, of you and your food truck, et cetera. Right. So um, I was blessed with the opportunity to receive NIL funds. And uh, we didn't just want to let that sit or, you know, put it into, you know, an account, let it build up for a few years. We really wanted to do something with it. And um, I'm not going to say we had it planned out by no stretch of imagination, but it was something that we wanted to do and we were really passionate about. So my mom sat me down and was like, hey D, um, I think we should make a food truck. And I'm like, what? Like, what you mean, mom? She was like, let's do a food truck. And I'm like, do you know how to do a food truck? She's like, no, do you? I was like, no, but we'll figure it out. So that's pretty much how it started. And um, we talked to, you know, our, our connections, you know, you, Charity, uh, uh, Mark, and uh, we really tried to figure out how to do this. You know what I mean? Like I'm the first person in my family to, you know, have a legitimate business. Mm. You know what I mean? So it was, so, we're, you know, it's uncharted waters. Like we don't know what we're doing, but you know, we're going to make it work. And that's what we did. And I really credit that to my supporting cast. My mom, my twin sister, my dad, they really, you know, took this by the horns and started <laughs> steering, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's how it all, all began. Well, I think, it, I think it's pretty incredible. And the funny thing is, is we brought in some people from, from that part of the industry to meet with y'all and help right. and the stuff, you know, most of the time when people get into that, they think they know everything and, and you know, and they, it turns out they're not really that far along when you actually sit down right. and talk with them. What was funny about that is we brought in all these people who were expecting that conversation. And instead, you and your mom came in with every answer. And your mom, I remember your mom had her binder and they were like, right. well, but you need to do this. And she's like this. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and then uh, and it, everything we said, I mean, they were it was like 90 percent. And everyone who walked out of those meetings was like, damn. They got it together yeah. and, and they did. And I think it's, it's cool. And, and it, I can't stress enough if you haven't been out to, it's called Jive Turkey for, for those of you out there. Anytime you're in Austin, you need to get out I'll to it. So it's it's uh, <laughs> the deep fried turkey tacos yeah. are game changer. Like I'm going, man. Absolutely. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm so sold just sold. that item yeah. right yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the funniest story was that when we got there, like we, uh, they have this amazing, it's like a cup that is separated into three sections. So you can mm -hmm. pour different three way Kool Aid liquid. Mm -hmm. And oh, so wow. they, Man, they put yeah, Kool Aid in there. And, uh, and uh, D, D's mom, Talia, was like, just Nick, be careful. It's not, it's, it's probably not the Kool Aid you're used to. Ah, and she's, she's like, yeah, there's a little more sugar in this. But I drank that on the way home, and it was so good. And I drank all of them. I was basically in a coma, sitting in traffic, <laughs> like from all that sugar. Austin, man. That's good. Yeah, it was sure. it was really good. But they've got they've got turkey burgers. They've got these deep fried turkey tacos. What's the bowl? Talk about the bowl. This is our really our best seller. It's a uh, <laughs> so all these dishes are what I love, and I'm a really big Thanksgiving food guy. So. <laughs> It's like a, it's a bowl of cornbread. I mean, we tweaked it now, but back then it was a mm -hmm. bowl of cornbread. And at the bottom of it was my mom's homemade macaroni. We had mashed potatoes. We had the turkey, the shredded turkey, and then we had gravy on it. 
Mm-hmm. Fire. What's business hours? Because I need to go today. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go check it out today. Uh, from 7 to 12. Every day, where is it? Uh, we're figuring it out because right now we've been at Tesla, uh-huh. the, the big giga factory in Maine. Oh, yeah. oh, nice. That's where I stay. Okay. Yeah, oh, okay. Nice. So we're at you the- You drive far every day to go to school. It's like, it's like 12 to 15 minutes. I, was, I mean, in LA, I was driving like 35. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you hit the 71. Yeah, yeah. But we'll yeah. put we'll put the the handle and all yeah, the info sure. on on here so everybody can find it. But yeah, I think it's it's for definitely sure. worth worth the trip, and right. the food's phenomenal, yeah. and the the people are even better. <laughs> I got one more question off that. Um, so obviously, you being young, you receiving a, a, a good amount of money, probably more money than you've ever seen in your life from the NIL. Not for um, real. <laughs> It's just a little surprising for me that you've been so selfless with your money. Like, you know, you see these college guys, they got the jewelry, they got the whips and all that, but you took the money and gave it to your family. Kind of what was your mindset with that? Like, how were you, how have you been so selfless throughout this process? One, I credit that to my upbringing. Mm-hmm. You know, my family, we're a really big giving family. And that's just who I am as a, as a person. I'm extremely helpless. I want to give. And that's pretty much my biggest thing, especially to the people I care about. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. What was, what was the rest of your question? My bad. No, I was just saying, because I guess, yeah, I, I did a bad job of phrasing the question. <laughs> but what I was saying is basically, you see everybody spending this NIL yeah. money on themselves. Okay, yeah. What made you, you want to give it to your family and prioritize them first? Not being in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I knew that this money is cool. Don't get me wrong. It's great. I'm blessed. But it's not those millions of dollars that I'll get in the mm-hmm. NFL. So that wasn't my focus to go get the big jury mm-hmm. and, you know, I know I've, I want to go get some stuff now no, no, for okay. sure. <laughs> you got but, to, <laughs> yeah. But I had to make sure that I was doing something with my money to make more money because right. I didn't. I didn't know. God forbid something mm-hmm. happens. No question. You know what I mean. And I don't want to be, you know, one of those guys. Mm-hmm. So I had to make sure that we did something with it, and we did. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We know we need more people like you, man. One hundred percent. I mean, and DeAndre was one of the people that that we've met, and you guys can sense it just from just from you know meeting him or knowing him. Like he is, he and his whole family are the most like wonderful, accepting, loving people, and to the point of. Every time we come out to that food truck, they're always trying to just be like, oh, no, no, you don't need to pay. You don't need to pay. And this like, dude always I, wants to but, pay. For <laughs> that's how it works. It. Yeah. <laughs> but it was hilarious because I finally got it to where I was going to pay. And I'm, I'm up there. I'm getting my credit card out. And DeAndre inches in and tries to get his credit card in beforehand. <laughs> it's just like, dude, you can't. No, that's not how it works. But no, but it's it's incredible for, for those of you. Anytime you're in Austin. Check out Jive Turkey. It is 100% Ooh. worth your time. Well, D, thanks so much for appreciate taking the time to, to spend some time with us. And uh, we appreciate you, man. Sure. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you.